Okay, so John, why don't you talk us through this one? Because um, we're going to be talking about Prey Dog's Unreal VR Injector, which is getting a lot of uh, positive notices on social media. You've given it a go yourself. Yeah. First of all, what is it? What does it do? Uh, and is it great? The idea is that it leverages uh, Unreal's uh, features and capabilities in VR and applies it to every game. So the idea is that, well, conceivably every game, not even UE5? Yes. I tested Robocop with this. It does work. Oh, wow. And mm -hmm. the idea is that this helps translate things like the way controls work into actual motion controls and it allows you to customize the experience to match like a dedicated VR game. And it does work. But I did find that there's some, still some caveats. And it's not like a, I think this is an amazing base to build from and it's going to lead to some remarkable polished up mods. But the idea is that you run this program. Uh, then you start your VR game of choice and you select, you then, once the game is running, you select the game from a drop down and hit inject. I initially had issues getting this to work and it turned out to be because to be due to Windows, Def Windows Defender, like trying to project, protect itself from injecting or something. I don't know why, uh, but I, I worked Gosh. around that. It's fine. And once injected, it just basically works as a VR game. You'll notice it shift to sort of the, a different view on your desktop, uh, a new menu pops up, which you can toggle on and off by clicking in the two analog sticks by default. Uh, you throw on your headset. Uh, the initial setup or just getting a game running in general is a little fiddly, I thought, because you have to interact with this front end interface to enable it. So if you're using, so in my case, I'm using the Quest 3 wirelessly. So I would connect it up uh, just to simplify it. I actually use the Steam Link function this time, but it does work with other methods such as the Oculus Air Link and uh, virtual desktop. But there's a caution around virtual desktop suggesting you can only use Open XR for minor problems. I need to explore what that actually means in practice. But mm. the, basically the issue is, is you got to you you put on your headset, you get things rolling and then you have to take off your headset, walk over to your PC or try to fiddle with it through the virtual interface in the headset uh to get the game running, go back to this app, select it, inject it and then you go back into VR and it it's not obviously it's not going to be as seamless as a dedicated VR game and that's acceptable considering what it's doing here. But once you put on your headset and the game's running, yeah, you're presented with a very configurable menu system that allows you to do all sorts of typical adjustments, including like some a simple example. By default in one of these games, so it maps it out to the Oculus Touch controllers, right? A normal FPS game, you would use the right analog stick to turn the camera. And that's still true in VR. But smooth turning in VR doesn't feel great. It can cause motion sickness. This allows you to turn on snap turning just from this menu instantly. You can also mm. determine the facing of... It can determine the direction of your character movement based on your choice. For instance, if you want head movement to determine your direction of movement, you can enable that as well. And I like that because you can just look around and the game moves where you look by pressing up on the analog stick. Uh, and there's all sorts of options for mapping in the motion control stuff and it can get a little bit finicky and you do need to pay attention to things like settings and resolution more. When I first loaded it up, it was rendering like 4K per eye or more or something like really high. And with Robocop, for instance, which is a UE5 game, uh, the frame rate huh. was not good. It was not good. Uh, I will no. say that the the time warp, the head translation stuff worked really well. <laughs> so like head movement looked smooth, but like actual game character camera movement was like, I don't know, 40 to 50 FPS, which feels really bad in VR. Mm -hmm. But... I was able to dial it down and get it running fine. I also tested Returnal, uh, which is a third-person game. I wonder if there's a way to do it in first-person. I don't know if you'd want that, but as a third-person yeah, game, right. it actually looks really cool being able to control your character in third-person while playing VR. Uh, that's That can be very immersive, That's cool. I would say. And yeah. that, that seems to be the case in general. If you're willing to fiddle a little bit, you can get some really neat results out. And it feels, I'd say, like maybe 70 to 80% there as far as uh, behaving like an actual native VR game. Maybe even more in some cases. But I think with some additional modding, some additional streamlining and continued improvement on this, we're looking at an extremely compelling way to bring Unreal Engine 4 and 5 games into VR without native support. Uh, oh, another one I tried was Juson. 
which had mm. wow. it took a little bit of fiddling, but once you get that going, like the sense of scale you get from those environments, it really works in VR. It's it's That's pretty awesome. stunning to see. So yeah, I I wanted to try I haven't tried it yet, but I was curious, what if you run like say Tekken 8 demo? in vr mode are you like looking at a little stage with the characters on it that actually could be neat there was psvr support in tekken 7 if you remember it was very limited very limited but it's funny so i'm really excited that this exists i think it has a ton of potential and it seems like the community has latched onto it in a big way and there's just profiles being made tons of customization happening people are going nuts with it and the potential is super high 